Welcome to part four of the AZ900 preparation series. Let's keep moving toward Azure certification. Question 21, which statements regarding Azure SQL geo-replication are correct? Choose two. This question is testing your knowledge about Azure SQL's geo-replication feature. Think of geo-replication like having backup copies of your database in different cities around the world. The question wants you to identify two true facts about how this system works. The options are A, multiple secondary replicas can be created. B, a maximum of three secondary replicas can be deployed. C, all replicas are writable. D, secondary replicas can be promoted to primary. Imagine you run a global e-commerce website. You want your database available even if one data center goes down. Geo-replication is like having identical copies of your store's inventory database in New York, London, and Tokyo. Now think, how many backup locations can you have? Can customers make purchases from all locations? What happens if your main location fails? The correct answer is A. Multiple secondary replicas can be created. D. Secondary replicas can be promoted to primary. Let's break this down step by step. Option A is correct because Azure SQL allows you to create multiple secondary replicas across different regions. There's no strict limit to just a few copies. Think of it like having several backup offices around the world. Option D is also correct because if your primary database fails, you can promote any secondary replica to become the new primary. It's like making your backup office the main headquarters during an emergency. Why are the other options wrong? Option B is incorrect because Azure doesn't limit you to just three secondary replicas. You can have more. Option C is wrong because secondary replicas are read only by default. Only the primary replica accepts write operations. Just like how backup offices typically don't make major business decisions. Only the main headquarters does. Question 22. Which types of project can be created using the Data Migration Assistant tool? Choose two. This question is asking about the specific project types available in Microsoft's Data Migration Assistant tool. Think of DMA as a specialized toolkit. It only does certain types of jobs, not everything related to databases. The options are A, patching, B, discovery, C, assessment, D, migration. Imagine you're moving to a new house. Before you move, you'd want to check if your furniture fits through the doors and what problems you might face. Then you'd actually move your belongings. The Data Migration Assistant works similarly. It helps you evaluate your database before moving it and then helps with the actual move. The correct answer is C. Assessment, D, migration. Let's think step by step. Option C is correct because assessment is one of DMA's core project types. When you create an assessment project, DMA checks your database for compatibility issues and feature parity, basically telling you what problems will you face if you move this database to Azure. Option D is also correct because migration is DMA's other main project type. This actually moves your schema, data, and database objects from your source server to the target server. Why are the other options wrong? Option A, patching, isn't a project type in DMA. That's more about updating software. Option B, discovery, is typically associated with Azure Migrate Tool, not the Data Migration Assistant. DMA focuses specifically on assessment and migration tasks, not discovery or patching operations. Question 23. Which Azure Database Migration Service option uses a dedicated network circuit? This question is asking about network connectivity options for Azure Database Migration Service. Think about the difference between sharing internet bandwidth with everyone versus having your own private highway. The question wants to know which option gives you that private, dedicated connection. The options are A, Application Gateway, B, VNet, C, VPN Gateway, D, Express Route. Imagine you're moving valuable data from your office to a secure cloud location. You could use the public internet, like driving on a busy highway with traffic, or you could rent your own private road. A dedicated network circuit is like having your own private road. Nobody else can use it, so it's faster, more reliable, and more secure. The correct answer is D. Express Route. Express Route is correct because it provides dedicated private connections between your on premises infrastructure and Azure data centers. Unlike internet based connections, Express Route uses a dedicated network circuit that doesn't route through the public internet, offering consistent performance and enhanced security. 
Azure Database Migration Service specifically supports ExpressRoute for site-to-site -site connectivity, allowing secure migration of databases over this dedicated connection. When you use ExpressRoute with DMS, your data travels over a private circuit that's exclusively yours. Why are the other options wrong? Application Gateway is a web traffic load balancer, not a network connectivity option. VNet is a virtual network container in Azure, but it's not a connectivity method itself. VPN Gateway does provide connectivity, but it uses shared internet infrastructure rather than a dedicated circuit. It's more like a secure tunnel through the public highway rather than your own private road. Want to become an Azure expert? Here's your fast path, beginner to administrator. Start with AZ900 to build your fundamentals, then move to AZ104 to become a certified Azure administrator. We give you 1400 plus real practice questions, mock tests, and even a money back guarantee if you fail. Tap the link now, get both Azure exam kits and grow your cloud career from zero to pro. Question 24, which Azure virtual machine component runs as a small software agent within the operating system? This question is asking about Azure VM components and specifically which one operates as a software agent inside the virtual machines operating system. Think about what runs inside the VM versus what exists outside of it. The options are A, data disk, B, logging, C, extension, D, region. Think of your virtual machine like a computer. Some components are physical hardware, like hard drives. Some are locations, like which city your computer is in. And some are software programs that run inside your computer to add extra features. Which of these options sounds like a small program that would run inside your computer's operating system? The correct answer is extension. Extensions are correct because they are small software applications that run as agents within the virtual machine's operating system. These extensions provide post-deployment configuration and automation tasks after your VM is created. Think of them like helpful assistants that live inside your VM, automatically handling tasks like monitoring, security, or software installation. Azure VM extensions work by installing small programs directly onto your virtual machine that can perform specific functions, like installing antivirus software, running scripts, or configuring monitoring tools. Why are the other options wrong? A data disk is a storage component attached to your VM, not a software agent running inside it. Logging refers to recording events and activities, not a software component itself. Region is simply the geographical location where your VM is hosted. It's external to your VM entirely, not something running inside the operating system. Question 25. Which web application component determines the virtual machine size? This question is asking about Azure web applications and specifically which component controls the size of the virtual machines that run your web apps. Think about what acts as the blueprint that defines how much CPU, memory, and resources your web application gets. The options are A, app service plan, B, scale set configuration, C, load balancer configuration, D, Azure function. Imagine you're opening a restaurant. You need to decide what size kitchen you want, small, medium, or large, which determines how many chefs can work and how much equipment you can fit. In Azure Web Applications, something similar determines the size of your kitchen, the virtual machine resources. Which component would logically control this fundamental resource allocation? The correct answer is App Service Plan. The App Service Plan is correct because it defines the CPU, memory, and storage resources available to VM instances that run your web applications. When you create or modify an App Service Plan, you're essentially choosing the size of virtual machines, small, medium, large, and how many instances you want. Think of the app service plan as the foundation that determines your computing power. It specifies the pricing tier, which directly controls the VM size and capabilities, whether you get basic resources or premium high-performance virtual machines. Why are the other options wrong? Scale set configuration is for scaling multiple VMs in a group, not for individual web app VM sizing. Load balancer configuration distributes traffic across servers, but doesn't determine VM size. Azure Function is a serverless computing service, not a component that controls VM sizing for web applications.